There's color everywhere. What's this? There's white things in the air. What's this? I can't believe my eyes. I must be dreaming. Wake up, check. This isn't fair. What's this? Hey guys, this is Cadme here from Bitten Apple TV. Of course, you know we're always in conjunction with it. Came from the radio. Now we are down here at the Bizarre Haunted Flea Market. We're here getting ourselves scared during Halloween time. <clears throat> so um, I spotted this booth and I was very intrigued about school spirit here with Chris. So I need to know a little bit more about this. Um, what kind of school spirit do we have here? Is it like anything like Nirvana? Am I going to hear Kirk Cobain? What's going on? That's 90s. I'm like way before then. I'm still <laughs> rocking the boat. Who's Corporation? Rock the boat. Don't. So, uh... School Spirits was done by Mark Burnett from Survivor. He wanted to get six of the best what he considered ghost stories for sci-fi. And uh, the, my event happened back in 1985 and in my college. And we had what's called a full bite apparition that actually was attacking people. And we got a photograph of it. We got the thing talking on tape. Ed and Lorraine Warren from The Conjuring and Evil Horror came to visit. It was a freaky, freaky time. And after about 20 years of hiding away, I decided to share my experience. and. And here we are, you, me, and that stalker. Okay, so this, so, so this entity was basically haunting the entire campus, or was it just a certain section of the campus that it tend to hang around the most? It was primarily in, ready for this, Erie Hall, but for Lake Erie at Geneseo campus. And it would constantly call my name. And they called me the ghost boy because it would actually talk with me. The newspapers came, the police came, we had a suicide, people got attacked. We had a blessing done by a priest. It was bizarre, and I didn't like being called the ghost boy. People assumed it was like mine to control, but I would throw things at it and hide. And for an 18-year-old kid just trying to go to school and learn, it was tough to be labeled something. It was tough to have the pressure of things you could understand, and I did my very best that I could to endure it. I tried in the end to help people and may put that thing to rest. Oh my God. So um, when it came to before this even occurred to you, um, were you into the paranormal? Did you believe in the paranormal? Or was this the kind of the moment that you go, oh, it's, this, is, this is real? No, no, and not at all. My dad was a science teacher. And he told me, Chris, there are no ghosts. None. Empiris is Immanuel Kant. And so when I first saw this thing, standing in my room with this tilted neck, I thought, well, there's drugs in my food, or a gas leak in the room, or my mind has just snapped. And all these things scared me. And it was only through over time that my friends began to record things in notes, take pictures of this thing and show effects in the room. We began to understand it's not something that was inside, it was outside. And once people got wind of this occurrence, it became a, a rage at the college. And I ended up hiding behind things not to get noticed. But uh, at least back then it was the occult. Today people love that with ghost adventures and taps and you know, a ghost society. But back then there was something to turn to and I was, I was scared. Oh my God. I'm so this, is, this is proves I wasn't always old and fat. Yeah, see it? Not even Photoshop. That's the real deal. Yeah. Once I'm smart, but I was not old and fat yet. Um, that must have been quite the ordeal for you. Um, how long did it take for you to, I guess, I guess get over the, uh, the situation and kind of just move on and like let it go? One of the things about being in a trauma is that you don't know what to do sometimes. And we label ourselves a jock, a brain, a geek, a stoner, a nerd. We're not those things. We're more than those things. And in a trauma, the real you comes out. For better or for worse, the real you comes out. You build friendships of bonds of friendship and trust. You understand people might look different, but they're the same as you are. You find strange allies, your friends for life. And so having good friends and wanting to move forward, I realized I could get through these times. Um, I don't think you ever get over something like this. Uh, if, if you lose a child, uh, if you lose a parent, if you, you, you lose your job, those things affect you. Someone says you might have cancer. You don't get over those, try to deal with them best you can. And so even though I think this has been resolved, I still wonder at night if it can happen again. You know, and uh, I, I wish I could say that all things in life are wonderful. They're not. What you make of it can be very powerful. And if you have people going through addiction or alcoholism or financial problems or divorce, tell them, don't isolate. Reach out, enjoy their food, play a record, listen to some music, and keep moving forward. And sometimes a hand comes out, they look different than you, they might sound different than you, but that hand comes out, accept the hand. One day maybe you bring your hand back out to them, and that way you take tragedy and make something nice. A lot of times today people talk about makes us different. We're always different, we're apart. Well, not really. We laugh, we cry, we dream, we pray. 
And I'm hoping that through my sharing the experience, people understand to enjoy their life while they have it. That is the most intense and very well thought response I have ever received on an interview. So yes, that was, um, which is very true. People do need to take that from, from tragedy. Um, without sadness, you wouldn't recognize anything that's good. Um, where can people, for those who may be going through the, because uh, one thing I can say is that what I've noticed with people going through um, a very serious paranormal um, uh, event in their life or any kind of trauma, it's often hard to uh, talk about it. It's often hard to find other people who are relatable, especially when it comes to paranormal. Shame in it because you feel you're different. You feel there's something wrong. And, and we all feel shame sometimes. I, when I'm not going around the country talking about the haunting, I'm a teacher. I teach kids who are special education, who oftentimes have no home, they live on the campus, they have no one to go home to. And they have hardship and they fear things. And then I'll tell them, listen, I know you have pain. Some have been abused, some have been you know, uh, phys physically abused. You can't go back and change those things, but your pain is real. So think about that when you have your kids, don't do it to them. Give them the life that you wanted for yourself. And that heals them and it heals you. And I, and I think that's so important too. You know, uh, we celebrate wealth, we celebrate appearance, we celebrate accomplishment, and those are all good things. But sometimes the quiet moments are the most valuable ones. My great grandma, my great grandma didn't finish school. She didn't have a lot of money. She wasn't going around making a name for herself, but she was so kind and so wise. When I was four years old, she had a little rose garden. In the middle of the ghetto, there were car parts and tires and she had a little rose garden. Every day she walked out and she watered the flowers. She brought me out and said, Chris, water the flowers for me. And she told me, flowers are like children. If you love them, you talk to them, you care if they are big and strong. And when the haunting subsided, I went back to visit her. But then she was in her 80s. And when you're in the 80s, you're not necessarily functional for society. They don't really pay attention to you. I went right back to her. She made some homemade soup. I cut her grass for her. She said to me, honey, what I tell you? And I said, you told me that flowers are like children. If you help them, you talk to them, feed them, they grow big and strong. And she gave me a kiss. And my grandma's not here anymore. She's passed on. Her garden's gone. But right here, she still lives. And that's the kind of thing I want to share with people when I speak with them. And I think that's what your book is definitely going to accomplish. Um, where, can, where can they find your book for those who are want to become uh, stronger? Sure. Well, I hope it works. Um, Surviving Evidence, it's by Dark Moon Press. You can find it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, all those places online. Um, my Facebook page is my name, Chris DeCesare. They can talk to me there. And I have a website. I think it's DeCesare, that's my name. D-I-C-E-S-A-R-E, I should know that. .webs.com. And there are, there are like these linky things on there, like you click on them on the interwebs. Yeah. And then you can, you can go on there and you can and take it out that way. It, it, you know, even if people don't buy a book, that's fine. Reach out to somebody. Anybody out there, if you're going through any kind of hard time, it's okay to be scared. It's okay to feel some shame. Understand there's always someone out there if you need them. If I say one more thing, I was walking through a mall in Pennsylvania last year, just going shopping in Scranton, and a guy came over to me and he gave me a big hug and said, you're my hero, the ghost boy. I thought, what? He said, when I was 14, I read about you in that college in New York, about the ghosts. I wanted to be you. I wanted to like be in your body and talk like you did and control that ghost. What was it like? And I said to him, it was scary, it was terrifying, it was traumatic. But to know that someone, years later, was hoping for me, was cheering for me, that I didn't know, hundreds of miles away, gave me the, the understanding, you know, not to isolate. And I, every person who comes to one of my lectures, I appreciate they're making time for that. And we don't know if we have two years, 20 years, or 80 years, but I want to make sure I live mine well and I hope you do and your, your listeners too. Thank you so much. Um, make sure you guys reach out. You're, have, you're going through something, reach out, reach out to him, check out the book. Find the good in the darkness.
if you enjoyed our bizarre, crazy, wacky, bizarre, and haunted travels uh, to the flea market out here in Long Island, please be sure to comment. Let us know what you think about what we found. And let us know if you thought it was bizarre enough or if you have a bizarre challenge. And while you're down there leaving a comment, you can feel free to click that button down there that says subscribe. And be sure to give us a thumbs up. You know, forever how many you can afford. Mm-hmm. <laughs>